Already, my friends, we're going to solve some common exam problems in thermodynamics that involves changes in Gibbs free energy and equilibrium. And these are the Gibbs free energy and equilibrium equations that we're going to use. And this is geared towards a general chemistry class, so no calculus. So let's begin. Okay, so uh, before we jump into the problems, though, I'd like to do just a very, very brief overview of the theory. You might you want to watch this. Uh, so we have a some reactant in equilibrium with some product here. And if the change in Gibbs free energy is less than zero, then it's spontaneous in the forward direction. So to the right. So from A going to B, that's spontaneous. But if the Gibbs free energy is greater than zero, normally we'd say it's non-spontaneous. And that's true to the right. But in an equilibrium reaction, it's spontaneous to the left. So the reverse reaction is spontaneous. So depending on the value of G, we can, if it's positive or negative, we can determine the direction of the reaction. Okay, that's it. Let's jump into the problems. Okay, so number one here for the decomposition of N2O4 uh, to NO has an equilibrium constant. So we're given a K, 4.7 uh, times 10 to the negative 3, and it's unitless, which K often is always is. Calculate the Gibbs free energy change, standard Gibbs free energy change for the equilibrium reaction. Okay, so to do that, this is, we're going to start easy and we're going to progress uh, to more and more challenging questions as we go along. We're going to build up from there. So we're just going to start off straight up with the equation, the change in Gibbs free energy equals negative RT times ln K. So at this point, we can just plug it in. Now make sure you use the right R so the value of the R that we use has to be the one that has joules in it, joules per mole Kelvin. So that's very important. And, oh, this is also very important. So we need a temperature, right? And it doesn't say a, a temperature. It doesn't give us a temperature here. So we have to assume that it's at 25 degrees Celsius, which is we would calculate it to 298 Kelvin. They should tell us this standard state doesn't mean that it's under 200, it's at 298 Kelvin. It often is, but it really could be any temperature. But if it's not given to us, then it's implied that it's 298 Kelvin. So um, that's a good point to remember. Okay, so ln K is ln 4.7 times 10 to the negative 3. And we'll plug this in. So negative 8.314 times 298 times ln, I don't have a ln in here somewhere, uh, here it is, way down below, uh, 4.7 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Okay, so it is a positive number, uh, 12,993, 12,993, and notice it's positive, if you'll do the units first, joules per mole, Joules per mole. So this is the molar change in Gibbs for energy. Usually we report this in kilojoules. So it would just be, uh, well, we have two sig figs, so it'd be 13 kilojoules per mole. Positive, so that means it is spontaneous to the left. So the decomposition is is uh, non-spontaneous at, at kind of standard state and temperature. Okay, for our next one, calculate the equilibrium constant at 25 degrees Celsius 4, and we have a chemical equation here and a ch standard change in Gibbs free energy, 50.2 kilojoules per mole, and the equilibrium constant is a capital K. We actually don't need the chemical equation for this one. We're just going to use the equation, but we're going to use it a little bit differently than we did in the last one. Again, every problem builds on the last. We're given the change in Gibbs for energy. We want K, so let's solve for K. I uh, will say ln K equals negative the change, standard change in Gibbs free energy over RT if we divide both sides by RT and, and negative one as well. Now this is logarithmic form, but to convert it into exponential form, a ln is just a log, right? It's just a log with base, not base 10, uh, base E. That's what the natural ln is. And to convert this to exponential form, we take the base, which is E, the number E, to the power of what it equals, so to the power of all this stuff, negative delta G naught over RT, and this is equal to the thing that's inside the log, the K. So this is how we convert to exponential form. So now we'll plug this in. Uh, or we'll, yeah, plug in our numbers. The change in Gibbs for energy, standard Gibbs for energy is 50.2. Now I know, before I put the units in, I know that R, the R that we use has to be 8.314, the one in joules. 
Like that's the one that you'll be given on exams, very likely. So our change in Gibbs free energy has to be in joules as well. Since we're given it in kilojoules, we need to multiply it by 10 to the times 10 to the 3 joules per mole. And then, yeah, then that's awesome. And then the temperature, what's our temperature? Oh, 25 degrees Celsius. So we want that in Kelvin. So it'd be plus 273.15 Kelvin to give us 298. So 298.15 Kelvin. Oh, close our brackets there. E to the power of negative 50.2 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by bracket 8.314 times 298 is a small number, 1.59 times 10 to the negative 9. So 1.559 times 10 to the negative 9. That's our equilibrium constant in all its glory. I'll just write it out here, 1.59 times 10 to the negative 9. This is a very small number. That means the, because K is products over reactants, right? Products over reactants. Uh, that's supposed to be products. So if this is small, then we have a lot of reactants, which means the, the, the reactants are favored. And because this is positive, the reaction is spontaneous to the right or to the left, sorry, uh, spontaneous to the left uh, under these uh, conditions here, what we're given. Okay, sweet beans. So we're getting a little bit more in complexity. Next one here, we have this chemical equation. Again, we want to solve for the equilibrium constant, K, that's our question. Now, to get K, we need the change in Gibbs free energy, right? Because the change in Gibbs, standard Gibbs free energy is negative RT ln K. We don't have the change in Gibbs free energy here. What we have is other data. <laughs> so that's that's not good. Uh, we need to calculate the change in Gibbs free energy. So to do that, if we're given enthalpy and entropy data, we can calculate the change in enthalpy using the Gibbs energy equation, Gibbs free energy equation, which is the change in Gibbs free energy. And then we're doing standard state, so it means it's under one bar, equals the change in enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy. Uh, so we can just literally plug that in. So this is negative 66.3 kilojoules per mole minus uh, T. So T is still 298.15 Kelvin. And then the change in entropy, you know what? This, this number here, negative 102.3, this isn't in kilojoules per mole. Uh, this is this should be in joules per mole. So sometimes there's errors in these exam problems, but uh, the entropy is usually om almost always reported in joules per mole uh, because the numbers are a lot smaller than than enthalpy. So I'm going to put that in joules, kind of prophylactically expecting that. So okay, so we'll plug that in, and we'll s plug it into our calculator as well. Negative 66. Oh, this is in kilojoules. If this is in kilojoules and this is in joules. We got to multiply this by 10 to the 3. I, I'm going to redo this. 66.3 uh, times 10 to the 3. Because I want this to be in joules per mole. Because this one's in joules. We have to have the same units. And then our, our Kelvin cancels out with... Uh, this would be joules per mole Kelvin as well. These units are all kind of screwed up. But this should be a Kelvin here. And then it, it'll cancel out with this Kelvin. So we're in joules per mole. Okay, hope that makes sense. 66.3 times 10 to the power of 3 minus uh, 298 times negative 102.3. Okay, it is a negative number. Okay, so spontaneous to the right. So 35815, 3, oh, we should put it in blue to be consistent. 35815. Negative, and it'll be in negative joules per mole. Okay, now that we have this number here, this is our delta G. We can plug it in to our equation here, which is so negative. Uh, should we plug it in yet? No. You know what? Let's solve for let's solve for k first. Solve for k, then it'll be less messy. So if we do that rearrangement like we did last time in the last problem, we get e. K equals e to the power of negative delta G naught over RT. And then we'll plug in our numbers. So negative, okay, so this is minus and this is a negative. So make sure we put this number in parentheses so we don't lose a negative sign here. Oh, joules per mole all over 
R and we want the choose the R that has the joules in joules per mole Kelvin and what's our temperature 298 298 0 0.15 the 0.15 doesn't matter but I'll put it in anyways just for fun all right so we want e to the power of negative bracket negative could have just made it positive but that's all right uh, three three five eight one five divided by brackets a lot of brackets going on eight point three one four times two ninety eight no two two nine eight and I can see that I typed it right so it's a oh a huge number one two three four five six one point eight nine seven one point eight nine seven times ten to the six and it's unitless because it's a K. Huge number. How many sig figs? Uh, let's give it three sig figs. So 1.90 times 10 to the 6. So it's a huge equilibrium constant. Because this is negative, it's spontaneous uh, to the right. Okay, so let's go a little bit more. We want to calculate K. Now this time we're given different data. We have a chemical equation here. And we're given the change in Gibbs free energy, standard change in Gibbs free energy of formation. So the Gibbs free energy of formation of the reactants and the products. So to calculate K, we still need to use our friend, new friend, this equation here that relates the change in Gibbs free energy to the equilibrium constant. But we still need to calculate delta G. Now this is delta G for the reaction when we plug it in the, into this equation, okay? But here, this is not delta G for the reaction. These delta Gs are the delta Gs are formation. So the, the Gibbs for energy change of when this is formed, when we make this out of the raw elements, theoretically, and also when this one's made out of the raw elements. And it's zero for elements in their reference state, essentially. So we need to find out what it is for the reaction. Well, it's products minus reactants. So the change in Gibbs free energy, I'm going to make this under standard conditions, is going to be equal the sum of the Gibbs energy of formation of the products minus the sum of the Gibbs free energy of formation of the reactants. It's supposed to say reactants right there. Okay, so we're going to add them all up. Now there's only one product. Oh, and there's also a, a coefficient in here we don't want to forget. So this V is the number here. And now there's no other numbers. This is like a 1, a 1, and a 1. But if this was a 2 or a 3 or some other numbers, we'd have to include those numbers in front here. So this would be, I'll include the numbers. So this would be like 1 times the uh, Gibbs energy of formation of this product, which is negative 363.2 kilojoules per mole. Minus, and I recommend doing a big bracket here so we don't lose any ne negative signs. Now we add these all up. So it'll be 1 times the PCL3 one, so the 272.4 kilojoules per mole. And then that's it. I mean, we didn't need the brackets, but it's, it's nice to put it in there if you're adding a bunch of things so we don't lose signs and stuff like that. Oh, just give us a little more space to work with. Okay, so this is equal to negative 363.2 now we're minusing a negative so i'll just make that positive 272.4 is negative 90.8 is that right looks right negative 90.8 negative 90.8 kilojoules per mole now we've done this twice already i'm going to convert this into uh we won't convert it into joules we'll 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 just plug it in after Okay, so we want the equilibrium constant. K equals E to the negative delta G naught over RT by rearranging this equation. Like we did in the first example, we derived this from this exponential form. So that's E to the negative. Now we're subtract negating, doing the, taking the negative of a negative number. We could just make it all positive, but I'm just going to put it all in parentheses so we see it. Now we know that R is in joules, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. We want to choose the R with joules. That means we want this to be in joules. Currently, it's just in kilojoules. So we got to multiply it by 10 to the 3 to put it in joules per mole. And temperature is 298 Kelvin. All right. We'll plug that in. We have, where's my E Euler's number? Is 
negative negative 90.8 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by I need another bracket here, 8.314. I love these calculators where I can see what I can type times 298 is <laughs> another, a very big number, 8.25 times 10 to the 15, 8.25 times 10 to the 15. It's very big. That means products are favored. The equilibrium constant is products over reactants. So to make this number large, we need a lot of products and not very many reactants. And delta G is negative, which means it's spontaneous to the right. So the products are favored. It's spontaneous as we go to the right. And that's, that's supported by the equilibrium constant because we have a very high equilibrium constant. So we'd expect to have a lot of products at equilibrium compared to reactive. Okay, I hope that was very thorough. Good luck on your midterms. Good luck on your final exams and quizzes. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped. And I've got many, 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 many videos on thermodynamics and other aspects of chemistry. So check them out. Good luck. <music>